Okay, chapter 16. We're going to look at what happens when you die. Okay. So I'm starting from verse 19, and there's quite a lot of scripture here, but um, I think what Jesus talks about here is one of the greatest pieces of scripture that helps us to understand a bit about what happens when a person dies. So, in verse 19, Jesus says this, that there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores. So the rich man, he had everything and Lazarus, he had nothing and he was ill, you know, he had these sores that would weep. Um, and we know that Lazarus is someone that Jesus loved because Jesus raised him from the dead. He was uh, famous for this. He was one of Jesus' friends. But he was using him in this parable to say that, you know, this is someone that I truly love. And uh, look at what happened to him. So in verse 21 it says this. This is about Lazarus. And so, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried so the beggar died Lazarus who was loved by Jesus and he was carried over to Abraham's bosom now Abraham is um, you know at this time he's like the father of the Jewish people he was very much loved and respected and to be carried over by an angel such an honor and to sit you know at Abraham's bosom it's like a picture of um, of real like love and um, this is what Lazarus received whereas the rich man he was buried now a burial was uh, probably quite an expense and um, the rich man had the savings that he'd saved up he went out and had I'm sure quite a good burial but the problem is is that he was buried under the ground but you know Lazarus was actually carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom quite amazing and in verse 23 it says this and in hell this is the rich man he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom so there was two locations for one of them one of them was in Abraham's bosom the other one was in hell so when we die there's really two different places that we go to we either go to be with Jesus because you know Jesus is like uh, to, to these to these guys that were listening to this Abraham was like the place where people would want to go, they would want to be where Abraham is uh, because he was like seen as um, you know uh, the, the righteous people, the father of the Israelites but now we know that Jesus is like the person that we really want to be with because he's God manifested in the flesh, you know, he's far more than Abraham um, so to be at Abraham's bosom is a great thing but you know when I die I'm going to go and be with Jesus um, but if you're not going to be with Jesus the other alternative place for you to go to is hell you know and it's a it's a fiery place and uh, that's what we read here it's it's so fiery in fact it says in verse 24 that he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that I may dip the tip of his finger, that uh, he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am torment in this flame. So he was being like burnt alive and he just wanted a t uh, just a drop of water to be placed on his tongue to give himself some form of relief. Um, and that's what happens in hell, you know, people are crying out in pain because of the, the fire that they're going through. And you might wonder why such a loving God would send people to a tortury existence of fire. Well, the way that I see it is like this. And God is perfect. I mean, you know, he created everything. He created us. He's immensely holy and uh, every time that we rebel against him 
we're basically rebelling against the best thing that could ever be he's perfect you know and we rebel against him and um, when we rebel against him although God is a God of love and he gives us mercy when we repent and turn to him and believe in the sacrifice of his son Jesus dying on the cross for the payment of our sin that when we believe in that he gives us mercy and he pays off all of our debts through the uh, sacrifice of Jesus Jesus becomes the curse so that we don't have to be cursed and he takes all of our sin from us um, and he gives us this mercy but you see the thing with God is that justice must be served and uh, he will pay off all of your sin pay the debt of your transgressions through Jesus' blood or alternatively you will have to pay off that sin but the problem is is that to have your sin paid off is an eternal punishment of the worst kind because God is a God of justice and we rebel against the most amazing holiest thing that you could even comprehend and to be honest I don't think we can comprehend how amazing God is so that's the reason why people go to hell when Jesus died there was two thieves on a cross one side by side of him and one person mocked him the other person repented and said please remember me when you enter your kingdom and Jesus said to me said to him truly I say to you that today you will be with me in paradise so Abraham's bosom you know being with Jesus is considered to be paradise and um, the thief that repented on that day and followed Jesus although he was dying on the cross and probably died that day went to be with Jesus in paradise and that's where one person goes the other person goes to hell as we see here and in verse 25 it says but Abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented so Jesus turns the world upside down you know the rich become poor and the poor become rich and he says here Abraham he calls him son and that's the same thing that I'm saying to you right now you know you may not know Jesus but you know we still love you and you know to us we love you so much we would call you our son because we love all of humanity but the thing is is that you need to come to Jesus in order to have an opportunity for your sin to be paid off justly through Jesus' sacrifice so that you can have paradise and be with Jesus when you die and Jesus is not someone to be feared when you have a loving relationship with him but he is someone to be feared when we rebel against him and in verse 26 it says this and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they would uh, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence so it's impossible to pass from heaven to hell or vice versa you're stuck in one of the other and the Bible says that this is for eternity so that's something to bear in mind you know you should settle your accounts with your adversary before you end up at the judgment and it's appointed for all men to die and then there is a judgment and that judgment it's fixed you're either on one side or the other you're separated by this large chasm and in verse 27 and then he said and this is the rich man I pray thee therefore father that is Abraham that thou wouldest send him to my father's house uh, for I have five brethren that they that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment so he's saying look send send Lazarus to come and tell people about this place so that my family will change from their wicked ways um, you know and that's that's I guess what we're doing you know we've experienced uh, heaven and Jesus and we know that he exists and we're just going around and we're telling you about this place of torment which you may be heading to but in verse 29 Abraham said of, said unto him they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said nay father Abraham but if one went to them from the dead they will repent 
and in verse 31 and he said unto them if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one raised from the dead now that's interesting because he said because the rich man was saying look if they won't listen to Lazarus you know well send Lazarus because he's he'll be raised from the dead and they'll listen to him and what's interesting is that Lazarus was raised from the dead and what's more interesting than that is that Jesus he died but then he was raised from the dead on the third day so you know Jesus went round and told people about the gospel and even though he was raised from the dead you know they wouldn't believe in him they won't believe in him and people still refuse him today so it doesn't matter to many people that Jesus rose from the dead and that the evidence is just like so compelling there's so much evidence out there that Jesus rose from the dead it doesn't matter what we put forward to you some people will still be rebellious but my friends if that's not you and you feel convicted and you want to go to heaven when you die it's so simple all you need to do is pray to God with your heart explain that you're a sinner and that you believe in Jesus that he paid off all of your sin and to thank God for that and to say you know that I believe that he came back to life and rose from the dead because that's really important because Jesus rose from the dead which is the hope that we all have for the future as a Christian that we too will rise from the dead and uh, get to live eternally with God in heaven and you should repent from your sin and be sorry for it and uh, want to live a new life professing Jesus as Lord. God bless you. When you die, I want you to be with me in paradise. I don't want you to go to hell, my friend. So, yeah, please repent today. God bless you. Thank you.